If you've ever taken the GED math test or any of the GED uh, ready practice tests, then you know that one of their favorite subjects is slope. They like lines, they like slope, they like points. You're going to see a lot of graphs on your test. Okay, so um, we're going to start here uh, with an examination of slope. And this is the first in a bunch of videos. So I would encourage you to stay tuned, keep checking them out because I'm going to look at tons of different slope application problems. Because as it turns out, what we've been asked to do here is find the slope. What is the slope? But how you do that depends on what you've been given. So what have I been given here? Well, this is what we call a graph. Some people call this a Cartesian coordinate plane or an XY plane or just a coordinate plane. Um, all those language, all that language might be used, but we're looking at a, a graph here. So um, if I am looking for the slope of a line based on the graph, basically what is slope? Well, slope's a measure of steepness. A measure of steepness. And it's an actual real number that we're going to attach to this. Some students will just give me a sign. Like they'll take a look at this line here and they'll say, oh, look, it's going down. This, this must be a negative slope. And I agree with you that whatever answer I get is going to be negative, but there is an actual number that we're going to assign to slope. So how do we find that number? Well, remember, we're looking at how steep um, this thing is. And so basically how steep a line is, is going to depend on how quickly it rises. Let me say that again. How steep a line is depends on how quickly it rises. Okay. And, and how do you figure that out from a, from a graph really? Um, well, one important thing that you're going to need to know here is that this axis, this horizontal line here is known as the X axis. And we use X to see um, our horizontal movement, how much we move left and right. But this axis here, the one that goes up and down, is your Y axis. And that's the axis that we look at to uh, see how much our line is moving up and down. And so to find slope, what we're going to do is we're going to make a ratio. We're going to make a fraction um, out of, so ratio, fraction, those are um, synonyms. They mean the same thing. So I'm going to make a ratio out of the rise. How much is this line rising as compared to the run? So the more it rises, this bigger the number is going to get, because as a lot of us know, the larger the top of a fraction gets, um, the bigger the value of the fraction. And then I'm going to put the run on the bottom. We're going to see how uh, much our line is going across. So again, rise is the up-down movement of a line, and run is the left-right movement of a line. Okay? Now, notice I use the word movement. Movement. It's the movement. It's the movement. In order to track movement, guys, you have to have a starting point and an ending point. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to pick up a point on my line, and it actually doesn't really matter what point you pick up. I could lay my pen down anywhere on the line, but the deal is there's a spots here that are easier or harder than others. The easier spots that are going to be uh, to determine where you're at. Can I say that again? I just broke the English language. The spots where it's going to be the easiest to determine where you're at is on the corners. Because on the corners, I won't have pieces and parts of numbers. I'll know where I'm at. So like here, this is a really easy spot because I can see right here that I'm at the intersection of negative two for a y and negative two for an x. So that's one point. But remember, slope is a measure of movement. As I move from one place to the other, how steep is my line? And so I'm going to need another point, a start point and an end point. So here's another end point. Here I am on a corner. And what I'm looking for is uh, I'm looking for how much did I rise and how much did I run? Now, this was an interesting problem for me to start with. I probably should have thought of it and not started with this one, but that's okay. Let's take a look. From here to here is the vertical movement. That's what your is that's what I mean when I say rise. It's your up down your vertical movement. Now a lot of students will just start counting boxes. One, two, three, four. Then they'll say that was a vertical movement of four. And you actually 
could do that and have it work out in this problem, but I'm going to pay attention to the markings here. If this is negative 2, this is probably negative 3, there's negative 4. I actually have gone down 2. I went down 2 on my line. And it's good to do that because there's no guarantee that the axes will be labeled the same way. So pay attention to the labeling on your axes. So what I see here is that my vertical movement was a shift down of 2. I used a negative sign because I moved it down. If I had moved up to get to the next line, I would have used a positive sign. Another thing that I want to point out to you is that I always start with the left point. I could have started with the other point, but it would have made everything more confusing. It's a lot easier for students if you start at the left point and move from there. Because if you want a positive run, you're going to need to run in the positive x direction, and that's right. And so I tease my students, always run right. We start left and then we always run right. Is that the only way to do it? No, not really. There's, it's just the easiest way to do it with I found students keeping track of their signs. So now how far did I run right? Well, if you look, my starting place on the X was negative 2, and my ending point on the X was at 2. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4. So I ran 4. And all I'm going to do is make a fraction out of that. So my rise was negative 2. My run is 4. And I get this fraction, negative 2 fourths. That's literally my slope, rise over run. But I want you to be really, really careful. This is a fraction. And something I know back from, you know, when I started doing fractions in third and fourth grade and that we learn in our GED classes when we do fraction problems is that every final fraction answer must be reduced. I don't care what you were doing with fractions, whether you were making ratios, whether you were converting fractions, whether you've been asked to add, subtract, multiply, and divide them, or whether, like here, you've been asked to measure your slope. If you have a fraction, your final act should be to reduce it for your final answer. And so what I notice is that 2 and 4 have a common factor of 2. I divide that out. And I have still a negative. This is still a negative fraction. I have a negative sign. 1 over 2. If that step didn't make sense to you, I suggest you go back and watch a reducing fraction video. Uh, but there we go. We have a slope on this line of negative one half.